girls are missing out. Too many girls are missing out. 23% less girls get to play a team sport than boys, you know, and it, it's just not right. But let's revisit that historic night at Wembley last night first. It was, of course, a historic night for football in England and for women's sport in general as the Lionesses beat Germany 2-1 after extra time in front of 87,000 supporters, a capacity crowd, at Wembley Stadium on Sunday night, securing the first major tournament title for the country since 1966. So will this be a sea change moment for women's sport? Well, Stephanie Hilborn is the CEO of Women in Sport UK and she joins me on the line now. Morning, Stephanie. Morning. Uh, Saw head this morning. <laughs> Do you know, I didn't drink heavily last night, strangely, um, but I did really enjoy it. Brilliant, brilliant. What were you, it must have felt like the culmination of decades of work to see not only the Lionesses winning a major tournament, ending the 56 years of hurt for England's major, uh, major footballing sides, but seeing it happen on home soil and seeing hundreds of thousands of people, if not million, indeed millions of people at home, watching and sharing in the moment of a great achievement for women's sport. Now, look, I mean, if you, if you research the history of women's sport, it is an appalling history. We've been excluded so deliberately for so, for so long, so many centuries. And, you know, the, the ban the FA brought in 21 to 71, you know, that was a big impact. Now, the FA now have just done so brilliantly to turn that round into, into yesterday's moment. Absolutely fantastic. Um, what it means is that the next generation of little girls can dream. And uh, what we have to do as a society is to make their dreams come true because we're not there yet. You know, the bottom line is that the investment in women's sport is still tiny compared to in men's. The broadcast coverage is still, you know, a very small proportion. And it, we need to completely turn that around. And, and actually, you know, the, the big clubs are still, even though they've got women's teams now, they need to really turn around the amount they're investing in them. And so across the board, school sport needs to be mandatory. Ever, you know, there's a lot to change. I mean, I've, I've been talking to various people before, um, you know, before the match and, you know, about, about girls who have got through to the top flight clubs. And, and they are, um, you know, they're still second class citizens. They're, they're still having to buy their own boots. They're paid, you know, when they first go in, they're paid minimum wage. They're not allowed out of school. You know, some of this is just heartbreaking when they've actually got that far. So, you know, we, this yesterday was a very emotional moment for all of those who followed um, women's sport and women's football and people, women of my generation who were banned from playing and you know, who got detentions for playing and all that sort of stuff. It was a really emotional moment. But what we've got to now do is take that as the moment of change, that the moment to actually put women in the boardroom at the top of the sport, in the top executive roles, uh, you know, and, and share this 50-50 across the board. Because one of the striking things I thought about the reaction last night, Stephanie Hilborn, was you had people, yes, in a celebratory mood, but people who'd worked within women's football were very much not resting on their laurels. I think they were taking it as an impetus to, you know, finally, as you say, bridge the gap between the men's game and the women's game. There's no, t there's no time to uh, bask in the success as much as uh, I'm sure the Lionesses had a great night out last night. It's now time to really seize this moment in the eyes of people like yourself and other people working in sport and make sure it translates into a positive legacy that's often lacking after big events like this. Look, I mean, I, I, I cannot take any credit for what happened yesterday. I mean, people like Sue Campbell and others in the FA and obviously they're bringing in Serena. Oh, my God. You know, they have done such a such a brilliant job. But it really is up to, you know, the doubters need to move aside. You know, they need to make space for these brilliant women who have made that possible yesterday to step in. And, and it needs to be wholesale, you know, change across the board, like I say, in all these different aspects of society because in the end, yeah, this was sport, it's a big moment. Uh, it was football, you know, this is true for all sport, it's really important, but this is about society, you know, because playing team sport equips you for life. You know, it teaches you, as we've seen, you know, it's so brilliantly expressed, it teaches you uh, teamwork, of course, it teaches you leadership, uh, you become resilient, you learn if we'd lost last night, you know, we, you learn how to lose and get up and go and fight again. And that you take into your life and you take it into your work, into how you cope with setbacks in life and, it, it, and everything else. And at the moment, 
girls are missing out, too many girls are missing out. 23% less girls get to play a team sport than boys, you know, and it, it's just not right. Now, there was also a huge dream deficit. We did a survey last year where we found half as many girls as boys were dreaming of reaching the top of sport. And, and we've got to, hopefully last night, we'll have actually started to close that gap. But we've got to be at, let these girls fulfill their dreams and, and stop making them, you know, feel like second-class citizens, which frankly, we, we have done for far too long. And of course, as the old saying goes, you can't be what you can't see. And millions of girls last night did see uh, the Lionesses win. And, and we'll be looking to follow their example in the, in the years and decades to come. Stephanie Hilborn, CEO of Women in Sport UK, thanks very much for joining us on Times Radio this morning. We've also got Mark Palios, former chief executive of the For Football Association, on the line. Good morning, Mark. Good morning. One of the interesting things about last night's achievement, or depending on your view, one of the depressing things is women's football has only been sanctioned by the FA in this country for 52 years, having been banned for the previous 50. In that context, this is a remarkable achievement, isn't it, to go to come so far, so fast, or there'll be other people who say, of course, well, it should have happened much sooner. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, and indeed, we nearly lost it again. When I went into the FA, they were uh, in severe financial difficulty and they were insolvent. And um, the professional game, and this is, this is a point to make, the professional game were basically running the FA at the time. Uh, and of course, because of the financial difficulties, they were looking to cut costs. And what they actually, I remember going to a meeting uh, and one of the meetings was they were discussing whether to cut, the, cut, cut any support to the women's game at the time, which um, I was against on the basis, and we didn't, uh, on the basis that, um, you know, just illogically, if you look at it, uh, football was the sport that dominated this country. We got 40,000 clubs in England at the time and you know how do you actually grow on that how do you build on that well of course you you then look at the other half of the population and say well let's get these guys involved as well so you know that was that was something that we did at the time uh, but you know success as many as many fathers and failures and orphan i think um, baroness sue campbell was mentioned there uh, and uh, this is this to my mind this is the second time that she's been a significant driver of success in sport in this country she drove uh, UK um, sport to get the, the medals that we got and all that kind of stuff. And then she came into the women's game here. And I think she has helped to drive what you saw yesterday, which was the uh, the uh, elite side of the game. Now, that creates an opportunity. And that opportunity has to be something that the, that the FA owns. And it has to be the FA that own it. Because, as I say, if you start to look at the professional game, right at the top, um, you've got the Premier League, but actually there's a lot of other clubs beneath that and the finances aren't great there. The, well, that's sorry, a, the facilities are, you know, if you look in the facilities just for the men's game and grassroots, um, they are deficient. And when I was there, you know, you'd see girls being asked to play on a pitch um, that was probably the fourth time used on a Sunday afternoon and with, with no changing rooms, etc. So, it's those facilities that need to be part of the infrastructure, but equally you need to develop the whole um, the whole coaching, uh, the expectations there now. People can aspire to play, but you've got to create an infrastructure that supports that. And that's that's a really interesting point you raise, Mark, because is there a risk there'll be no shortage of cash flowing in to sponsor the Lionesses and individual stars and the very top of the game, the Women's Super League, the very top tier, which we often see on television now. But is there a risk that it then falls foul of the the financial situation we see in the men's game, where there's loads of money at the top of the game and not all of it trickles down. Absolutely. And I think that, um, you know, if, if you're sitting there as the chief executive, the FA, it's not for me to tell him how to do his job. Well, you have done but, it before, Mark. Yeah, but I mean, any, any, any business will tell you that you look at your priorities and whether it's a turnaround or whether it's a normal business, you have to focus on your priorities. And if you stood there today after what you've seen throughout this tournament and you looked at it, you would say, well, what are my priorities? And it may be that you actually switch your priorities to not only providing um, more of the sort of the physical infrastructure and resources that needs to be done. I mean, people laughed at that, you know, them selling Wembley. Or, or, but for me, that was the most obvious thing to do and apply the value of, of Wembley to the, uh, the infrastructure around the country. But on top of that, you now have to develop um, <clears throat> the whole sort of coaching system, 
that's there and available for for boys. You need to develop that. You need to develop leagues uh, for girls to develop in terms of their games program, etc. So I would think they should be sitting there and thinking that strategically we need to allocate more resource to developing that side of it than perhaps you know looking so hard at the the men's game for a while. Mark Pallas, you're also the chairman, just briefly, of, of Tranmere Rovers. Uh, will we see your women's team in the Women's Super League? Are you going to be ploughing money into that now? No, no there, there, there is the problem because when you come at... When I came back to Tranmere, one of the two things I wanted to look at to start with was futsal and the women's game because at Tranmere we have a great history and we were one of the first teams in the 90s to start sort of uh, really developing sort of the women's side and we have a number of England internationals. But sadly, because of the financial position of the club, we're not able to really invest in that as we you know, try and deal with the issues that you have as a, as a lower league club. And that's why I think that, well, we do have a women's team, but it tends to get very little sort of material support, I'm sad to say, from the, from the club itself. And I think that's not dissimilar to a lot of clubs down in the lower leagues. And, you know, I think that <coughs> that's another reason why you can't look at the professional game and let the professional game drive the development of the women's game in this country. It has to be done from um, the grassroots. It has to be done from the governing body. Well, Mark Palios, former chief executive of the Football Association and chairman of Tranmere Rovers, thanks very much for joining us on Times Radio this morning. Really interesting point there. I think there's a lot of emphasis today on equalising the men's and the women's game, and I think we're overlooking the fact that the men's game and the men's professional game in the Premier League, not very much to admire in the way they do business. 